Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my June favorite. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are new here, welcome. I talk about luxury beauty and luxury fashion. We've been going over to the fashion side fashion side a little bit more, but I am trying to make sure I continue to talk about luxury beauty. That is my first love. So mostly beauty here today, but a few fashion items. So starting off with SPF. So I've been trying out various SPF products, and I think I found one that is more suited for my skin type. Most of the SPF products I've been trying are very hydrating. I think they're great for drier skin types, but for combo, more oily, this is really nice. It's the Sun Forgettable face shield matte, and it's not a clear or translucent product, it's actually tinted, but it's tinted in a way that works for my skin tone. It's warm, and I'm gonna show you how I apply this just straight on the skin. It actually appears more like a lightweight foundation on the skin or a sheer foundation, but it stays matte. So don't get that oily kind of residue that I can get with other SPF products. I'm going to go through all of my SPF products probably in a vlog, give you a little bit of information about each one and why I think they're good or what they're good for um, because I use them for different purposes and sometimes I'm combining different ones together. So today though I have this Color Science SPF 50. Don't know where I've never tried that before. I've used so many SPF products especially by color science, but that's the first time I've tried that one. Then moving on to foundation, I've got on a couple of shades here. This is not a new foundation to the market, but it's still really one of the best foundations I've ever used. It's the Chantecaille Future Skin I have on Cream and Shea. And I also have other shades, but we'll talk about that a little bit more maybe next month about all of the shades that I have but cream and shea are what I have on now. And I especially love this when I have no SPF on, so for the evening. So if you want a really skin-like foundation, this directly on the skin is beautiful. It just enhances the skin. It doesn't look like you're wearing any makeup, but it blurs. It just looks like more beautiful skin. So I love this one. Or the other one I've been pulling for and I didn't demo it, I feel like I've been demoing this a lot. It's the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. Well, actually, I'll be using it in a video coming up. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it before, it's amazing. It's very multitasking. Uh, so the Water Fresh Tint in Medium Plus is also one I've been pulling for. So again, if I'm not using SPF, it's this directly on the skin or the Water Fresh Tint. I think these are two wonderful foundations, especially for the summer when it's hotter, you want less makeup on your face. Beautiful. Then we've got here, nothing new for concealer except that I have to say I think honey is a better shade I don't know I'm trying to figure out why I migrated over to mocha mocha still works but honey maybe because my dark spots are not as severe is working really nicely so I've got mocha not mocha honey did I say mocha I can't remember honey is the good shade for me right now so honey is what I have on my face and I picked up mocha and honey recently but honey is the one that seems to be working better with my skin tone at this time of the year, even though it's summer and honey is lighter than mocha, it seems to be working better. So I have honey on instead of mocha, which is what I normally use. And under the eye, we've got on nothing new here, the Chanel eye concealer. But I did want to show you if you want to go in lightweight with just SPF, and if you just want some very light brightening under the eye, this product is one that has been a go-to. The Ola Henriksen in uh, the banana color. So I applied this first, and then I put on the Chanel concealer. So I really like this for those no makeup makeup days, and just some SPF, it's really nice. And then I do have La Prairie under here just to brighten. And then we've got a new powder to the scene. I talked about this in a recent video, and definitely it. I have it on now in tandem with another powder. It's the Jones Road Powder in Light. I have two shades. So we've got light, which is more of a peachy tone, and then we have yellow. And I used yellow right under the lash line to set Trench by Victoria Beckham, which is their eyeshadow stick, but it's not this one. It's Trench right here. They all look so similar. But yeah, I have Trench on underneath here and I set it with yellow. And that's to take care of some of the redness under here as well as the shifting um, concealer that can happen because I've got these diagonal lines right under my eyelashes. So I went in with Trench because it stays much better than a concealer. So I've got that under there and then I've got um, this light on the center of my face. So I set with this. It's such a lovely powder in that it sets 
but it's not a visible powder. You can just see the results of it. And it feels really intact for a long amount of time. Like I said, I have to do a wear test on this to see exactly how long, but it does last quite a long time. I definitely can tell when I have set with that because things stay in place. And then I did go over that with a little bit of the Chantecai Perfect Blur Powder. So I do have that on top. But underneath that, so it went Jones Road Powder, and then I used this blush by Milk Makeup. I like this shade right here, Work. It's really pretty. I just did that for a pop of color on the cheeks. And then I went in with Valentino's blush, which is like a staple for me. I use this all the time. It's in number nine. I'll probably hit pan soon on this, but it's one of my most used products. Still love it. So I buffed it in with that. And then I went over with the Perfect Blur Powder by Chantecaille to kind of buff everything in. And then of course I went in with a couple of products I've really been loving. The Victoria Beckham Eye Brow Product, <laughs> the Baby Blade in dark brown. I've got that on. I used that in tandem with the Dior Onset Brow. I still need to pick up the Dior Pencil to try that out, the new one. And then we've got here for contour, I used the Victoria Beckham in marble and I just love this one so much. Used it on my nose as well. And I highlighted with a couple of different things. I again have been using these on repeat, so these won't be a surprise. Where are they? So I have on here the powder highlighter by Chantecaille in Stella, which is really beautiful. So I have that down the bridge of my nose because that um, if there's gonna be movement anywhere, it's gonna be here because I wear sunglasses or glasses. Not that the Victoria Beckham's really moved around, but I can tend to get oily right there in between my eyes. That's why I went in with a powder here. I also used it as an eyeshadow right on my lids here. That's what that very faint glow is. And then I used it on the inner corners of my eyes here just to brighten that. I think it really opens up that area. Very lovely tone. Again, if you are my tone, it's got that peachiness to it and it works really well against especially my skin tone. So I love this one. But I also went in with the Victoria Beckham highlighter on the cheeks because even though I have more oily skin on the interior of my face, the exterior can tint can tend to be more dry. So that's why I like something like this more balmy texture on the cheeks because if I'm gonna get dry anywhere, it's going to be right there. So if you have combo skin, you probably experience similar things. Speaking of skin, I did wanna mention that this Tata Harper, the concentrated brightening essence that I've been testing out, I've used it, been using it for about a month and that's how long it's lasted. So it will take a while to go through this. So if I go by month, like one, two, three, four, maybe five or six months worth here, really like it. It's a brightening essence and I always like to have a brightening essence in my routines. I will either use the Clay de Peau brightening product, Chanel's brightening product, or Chantecaille. And now this one by Tata Harper, very lovely products. Let me know what else you love by Tata Harper because I really like this product. And so I'm curious about her other skincare items, but it's nice and fluid like weight and has a lovely botanical scent about it. Really lovely. And so then I've also been taking it easier on moisturizer because I saw a video uh, from a makeup artist talking about, especially in the summer, maybe skipping moisturizer. So depending on the day, depending on my skin is behaving and depending on the weather, if it's more humid, I might skip it. I might stop at Serum, the brightening one by New Face because I do use a New Face device every day now because of that product. It's a lifting, brightening or firming firming and brightening product. I think it's called a firming and brightening or brightening and firming product. And it can also be used without the actual device. So if you don't have the device and you want the benefits of that, I believe you can still use that. I'll double check. I have Pecan by Victoria Beckham in the crease right there. And oh yes, so as you can see, it's very simple makeup these days. I don't know if I'm technically using less makeup. It's just less evident makeup, I wanna say, because I still use several products, as you can see, but the result is very understated. So I think this actually takes a little bit more technique because it's really hard to cover flaws with this kind of makeup because there's no color or like shimmery things to distract from the eye. It reminds me kind of of like quite luxury fashion in that there are very neutral tones but the fabrics themselves are such high quality. It's really hard to cover flaws because the colors are so neutral because it is such a simple palette. I feel like when you have more, I don't know, distracting things, it's easier to get away with 
mistakes and flaws. <laughs> Let me know if you agree or not. But I also feel like the same is true for makeup. So when it comes to this more neutral, less is more makeup, it's harder to disguise flaws and mistakes. Um, so where was I going with this? Oh, so it doesn't take me less time necessarily, and it doesn't necessarily require less products. It's just a different aesthetic. Although I'm sure it looks as though I have not spent as much time nor used as many products, but you'll see in the Get Ready With Me, it's still a lot happening here, so. But as soon as some of these palettes, especially by Clay de Peau come out, I will definitely be using color again. But right now, really enjoying this aesthetic, but as everything, it won't last forever, but I really am enjoying it right now. So even though I have blush on, even though I have highlighter on, powder on, it's really hard to see it, I think, especially on camera. And then we've got here, oh yeah, let me add a little bit more. So for lips, I've been loving the Victoria Beckham in tan line. And then this is the Rouge Coco Balm in 914. And I've been loving this. I feel like this is like a lipstick version almost, or a lip balm version of that, except there's a little more pink here. So this does have a sheerness to it, but it's still really pretty. So if you want to step up from like a lip gloss, something like this is nice without it being a lipstick yet. So it still maintains the natural sheerness about it and just a really pretty healthy look. Um, I'm trying to think, did I miss anything here for anything? Oh no, that's what I forgot. As I was saying, very neutral palette, but the only place I added color, and this is where I like to add color these days, is in the eyeliner. So I have, I think I have all of the shades of the Chantecaille eyeliners. They're one of the nicest eyeliners. I just get distracted by other eyeliners sometimes, but I always go back to Chantecaille eyeliners as some of the most easy to apply. They just glide on and they stay. So this one right here, so pretty, and they have some unique shades. So the one I have on now, I'm trying to find it. Well, it looks like this. Of course, I'll swatch it for you, but it's Black Forest. And I think, I think I noticed it in the Get Ready With Me that I think I'm inspired by my pearls here. So Actually, these are from my mom. And then also this pearl right here, it's got kind of like that greenish, silvery, bluish thing happening. So I think that's why I have been pulling for this color and I don't see this color by other brands. So that's why I wanted to point it out. So Chantecai has their eyeliners in beautiful shades like a beautiful brown color in earth or amethyst, which is more of like a well, an amethyst tone. And then this one is quite unique the Black Forest. It's a beautiful, cool green tone, very rich, but also just pretty and easy to wear. It is not like a vibrant green by any means. It's just a really pretty tone if you want just a hint of color. And then moving on to, oh, fragrance. So I know that you have been asking about fragrance. Why have not why have I not been talking about? So I pulled for this and this has been a recommendation before. So this is Basilico and Fellini. It has a lovely basil note to it, which makes it really unique. And I know some of you have picked this up and have gotten compliments on it because it is such a unique fragrance and I think a lot of people don't wear it. And I like that. I like wearing fragrance that not everybody is wearing, but it's a very clean summer scent. It smells like a garden. There's like a little bit of a water lily thing happening and very like water based fragrance, but also with a basil in there, it reminds me of a garden. Yeah, it's a really beautiful one. So if you are interested in that, make sure to pick it up. So for those of you who have picked this up, you've provided me some really great feedback to let me know that you would love this as well. Fashion favorites. I talked about these a lot. <laughs> Were these in um, my vlogs? I unboxed it in my vlogs. I love these because they're a little bit different than other even other Celine sunglasses. First of all, I love the case. It's very narrow, so it's not really bulky if you don't like to take up lots of space with your eyeglass cases in your bag. But these have the blacked out logo here. It's a little bit difficult to find. So at first I think I only saw it on Bloomingdale's, which is where I ordered it from. Then I saw it pop up on Nordstrom. So it's not offered on every site that has these. And I I'm actually not sure what they're called because they're described as round on one site, they're described as geometric on another site, which is why I wanna show them to you because if you want the ones like I have, they have these with gold and I think they come in like pastel colors, which looks really fun. But for me, I like this because it's all the same shade. So you can see the Celine 
logo there, but it's black just like the frames, and then the actual lenses are very dark. And I have really been enjoying them, so I told you I would update you on if they leave marks on my nose. And so I will wear these for a few hours, and there's some markings here, but it's not completely indented. Like sometimes they wear sunglasses. I'll have marks on my nose for hours and hours and hours after I take them off. This is not the case. It will disrupt my makeup though. And if it's really hot and I've had them for a long time, sometimes it will kind of dig in here, but not to the degree that I've had some glasses really leave some evidence that I was wearing them. Um, but these are the glasses. If you've not seen them, they're so good. I think they're the perfect shape for lifting. So you can see this line right here. It just kind of follows the cheekbones right here. And I think the weight is really good. And then it doesn't totally cover my brows because I don't like when my brows are completely covered. I want them to show a little bit and they come away from my face enough that they're not resting on my cheeks. But if I'm smiling, which I do a lot, they'll touch. So just know that if you have a small nose like me, it is not like it's sitting on my face because that can happen um, in some cases. So I really like these if you were wondering about them. So I only buy one pair of glasses a year. Do I? That's the plan. The plan is only to buy one pair of glasses a year. And I'm so glad I made these the ones that I picked, but I was thinking I need another pair of sunglasses. And um, like I said, we're traveling and we'll be spending a lot of time, hopefully by a pool. And if I have my prescription glasses on, yeah, I can't read a book or phone or magazine with my prescription glasses because they're for seeing far away and I can't see up close. So these, have no prescription on them and then I can read up close. I don't have to use readers or anything like that yet uh, to see things up close. So having no prescription is better for me for that situation. So that's why I got those. And I love this blouse that I have on, the Willow Blouse by Jenny Kane. I have been wearing it pretty much nonstop. I need more tops. This is what I need to shop for and it, it must be difficult for me to find them because I look and look and look. I'm thinking of getting the Hermes scarf and using that and they have a little cute little like um, piece of hardware that you can use to help tie and be creative with a scarf. I'm really tempted to do that because I want some versatility and it will be a little bit unique. So I'm looking at that, but I, yeah, I'm looking on various sites for tops. So what I like about this is that it has a bit of a shape, but it's still relaxed, so it doesn't look sloppy. It's a bit sheer, but that's fine. I have a lot of silk camisoles to take care of that, so I don't have to worry about the sheerness. I like that it looks great with tailored pants. It looks great with jeans, again, very versatile. You can dress it up or dress it down. That's what I look for in tops. And plus it covers my arms, so. This is not my favorite feature right here. So this covers it up nicely and it's very breathable, lightweight fabric. So this is by Jenny Kane. If you were looking at it, I really like it. It's medium. It's definitely oversized. I probably could have taken a small, but I'm happy with the medium because I feel like since it's oversized, just lean into that oversized idea and it works. So that's why I'm happy with the medium. So this bag that I picked up, if you saw my posting, if you saw my vlog, I have been really enjoying using this. It's very supple leather as expected. The only thing is I wish it was larger. So I'm on the taller side and it's like um, what I think a medium is for most people, but I would like something just a little bit larger. So if they made this in a larger size and open, because this has a zipper on it, you can see it has a zipper. It has this crossbody, which I didn't think I'd use, but it's been really handy to use as a crossbody, but it folds up like this. So I love the shade too, but that's the only thing. So I wish they had a bigger size, but I have been using that every day since I got it. But in general, I've been loving all of the pieces that I picked up. I've been doing a lot of shopping recently. I think I've made some really sound choices. In fact, I'm going to do a video on, I think maybe I've narrowed it down to 10 essential items for your summer wardrobe, especially if you're doing a capsule wardrobe, because these are things I've been wearing over and over again since I purchased them. I'm looking at my rack, it's right over here. This, I have this rack of clothing right here that I'm looking at. I can't see anything that I purchased that I haven't 
really been wearing, which is a good sign because I really don't like when I purchase something and I don't use it. Yeah, I feel like I've been using these items on repeat. So I'll definitely be sharing those with you in an upcoming styling video. So let me know what you would like to see specifically if you're interested in fashion at all. I'd love to know what you're interested in seeing, especially when it comes to essentials. That is it for my June favorites. Let me know what you've been loving in the month of June. If you saw one of my vlogs, you'll know that you definitely influence my purchases. I have purchased things based on your recommendations. And I'm so glad I did because I discovered some really interesting items that maybe I would not have been looking at. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.